Hi, I'm Darren Sugiyama, CEO and founder of Landsmark Capital, the most transparent premium financing intermediary in the life insurance industry. So you're probably wondering, why am I wearing my pajamas? Well, it is currently 4.07 in the morning right now, and I've got a crazy busy schedule this week. Um, I am jumping on a plane to Virginia tomorrow, uh, which is Thursday, and um, so I'm actually recording this webinar a week in advance. Uh, so by the time you're watching this, I will probably be off uh, doing uh, a gazillion other meetings. <laughs> so um, the other thing that was kind of funny, I actually had someone over uh, to the office yesterday, uh, which you see in the background here, this is actually my home office uh, during the pandemic. Uh, everyone went remote. I'm paying, gosh, almost $15,000 a month for an office that I'm not using right now. <laughs> I have two more years on the lease, um, but I actually work out of my home office now. Um, anyway, a friend of mine was over yesterday and he said, you know, a lot of people think that your background on your Zoom meetings is uh, is fake. <laughs> they don't think it's actually the background. So just for proof, yes, I am in my pajamas. It is four o'clock in the morning and my background is actually real. It is not a fake background. It is actually uh, my home office. Uh, we converted our guest house uh, into office space and then I actually have uh, another three private offices on a different part of the property that we use for administrative space uh, and a conference room. Um, so anyway, uh, today's webinar is, well, I should say, the webinar I'm broadcasting today that I recorded about a week ago um, is going to be about a particular IUL product um, that we have been looking at for a long time, uh, done a lot of business uh, with this carrier. This carrier is Penn Mutual. Um, I think Penn Mutual is a fantastic company, a fantastic carrier with fantastic people. Um, and I'll tell you the 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 kind of, I guess, disappointing thing with AG 49, A and B and all the different sort of restrictions that the industry puts on the way carriers can illustrate their products is that Penn Mutual has a fantastic product that just doesn't illustrate as well as some other products out there. It doesn't mean it's not as good. Um, what it does mean is just based on, again, AG49 guidelines, uh, the way it looks in the actual illustration um, is really underselling just how brilliantly that product is put together. So in today's webinar, I'm going to take you through a case study using the Penn Mutual product. Um, and I'm also going to compare it to another product from another carrier that illustrates substantially better, but I would definitely not say is better. Um, I'll let you be the judge of which product is quote unquote better. Um, but um, again, the results were absolutely shocking. And what's crazy about this is you would never know that one product is built more efficiently than the other unless you ran it through my proprietary back testing software. So um, let's go ahead and get into the content. Okay, so I've seen a ton of videos online on YouTube. Um, I've read white papers written by people that really want to tear down the concept of index universal life insurance products. Um, I would say that the large majority of these critics really do not understand how these products are actually built, how they work. Um, most of these people are kind of self-proclaimed advocates of the consumer, I think are putting out a very irresponsible message because it's not rooted in mathematical truth. Um, everything we do here at Landsmark Capital is rooted in indisputable mathematical truth. So what we're going to look at today are a couple different IUL products. Um, and the design that we're going to look at is using one of our premium financed uh, designs here. Uh, the one we're going to look at is first dollar financing uh, with cost recovery. So this is a method that we use for death benefit focused designs, wherein the client is going to borrow 100% of the premium, pay the interest out of pocket, and then later on recover their interest out of pocket costs by taking policy drawdowns and all the while still keeping the death benefit above the minimum amount that the client is asking for. So we're going to highlight the Penn Mutual product. Um, and this particular case study was kind of a challenging case study, quite frankly. Uh, it was a 59 year old male, uh, non smoker, but table five. So with a rating that adverse, things can get a little challenging. Um, we'll take a look at the design here, and then we'll discuss uh, how we did it, why we did it. And we're also going to show a comparison to another financed IUL product on the same client, but using a different product from a different carrier. 
So again, this is the Penn Mutual design here. We're starting off with a little over 20 million in face and the annual premiums on a 10 pay are gonna be $2.3 million. Um, in this design, the client is gonna borrow 100% of the premium and then they're gonna pay the interest due out of pocket each year. Obviously, they do have to post collateral. We're gonna exit the loan in year 14 in this particular design. We see there the death benefit hits a low point of $10.8 million. And in this particular case design, uh, the client was looking for $10 million in death benefit. And then we're going to show them recovering some of their out-of-pocket costs in the form of participating loan drawdowns from the policy values. So what we're doing here is we're calculating uh, when we can start taking the drawdowns and how much those drawdowns can be over what extended period of time to keep the net death benefit above that $10 million mark. Uh, as we see there in the right-hand column there, the net death benefit, uh, the death benefit net of loans, I should say, never dips below $10 million from that point on. And that is assuming a 6.35% uh, hypothetical index credit. Now I'm gonna breeze through a couple key pages in our premium financing report. In this particular one, we show the client outlay here. Again, these are the interest payments that they would be making out of pocket. We're also showing some semi cost recovery drawdowns from the policy values. And in the blue column there, that is a non-insurance based taxable investment, assuming the same amounts paid in interest in the premium finance policy being invested in this hypothetical non-insurance based investment. Uh, they're also cost recovering by taking those $1 million annual drawdowns. And this is under the assumption that they're getting the exact same gross annual return in this hypothetical investment as we are showing in the policy illustration. And this also assumes a certain tax drag from uh, short-term capital gains tax as well as estate tax. In the green column there, those are the net death benefit amounts on an ongoing basis. And again, we see it hit a low point of $10.8 million uh, right around between years 10 through 12. And then we see that death benefit net of loans begin to increase again thereafter, even with those $1 million annual drawdowns. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, the green line is the death benefit net of loans amount in the premium finance policy. And the blue line there, those are the year-to-year uh, -year values of the non-insurance-based investment account uh, net of fees and taxes. So from an estate planning standpoint, uh, using the premium finance life insurance policy, uh, it is very, very advantageous and uh, outperforms the non-insurance-based investment account after taxes, after fees, uh, again, assuming the same gross annual return, in this case, 6.35%. And so again, there's the net death benefit, again, the death benefit net of loans and the premium finance policy, as well as the net portfolio value after fees and after taxes, after estate taxes. If we were to look at an apples to apples comparison, uh, in addition to the non-insurance based investment account, uh, this is a non-finance life insurance policy, same product, same carrier for a level $10 million death benefit. Uh, this would be $284,000 and change in annual premiums on a 20 pay. And again, that would produce a level death benefit of $10 million on an ongoing basis. In the premium finance policy in the green section there, those are again the premium financing interest payments. We do have some semi-cost recovery drawdowns coming there, and we see that the net death benefit does not dip below $10 million. Uh, on the right hand, uh, on the right hand side of the screen, the green bars are the death benefit net of loans in the premium finance policy, and the orange bars are that level $10 million death benefit in the non-finance policy. So if you've seen any of my webinars before, or if we've worked on cases together, uh, these pages probably look very familiar to you because these are standard pages that are included in our Landsmark Capital client report. But what I really want to get in today is looking at how these products look using our proprietary backtesting software. Uh, again, the backtesting software that we have, we call this a proxy um, and the proxy is a fictitious hypothetical investment that behaves very similar to certain real-world products. Uh, in this case, the real-world product is the Index Universal Life product. So the proxy we built here uh, uses a very similar design as the Penn Mutual real-world product, uh, the IUL. Uh, the contributions we're going to use are the same contributions as the premium schedule in the actual real-world product. Uh, the beginning of year charges are the same as the real world products premium load charges. 
The monthly charges are the same as the remaining policy charges in the real world product. Uh, the end of year credit method, we're gonna use a 1% floor and a 10% cap, which is what the current floor and cap is uh, in this particular Penn Mutual product. Uh, in this design, to get that 10% cap, there is an asset-based charge of 75 basis points, and there is a multiplier bonus of 15% or 1.15x. Um, in Penn Mutual's real-world product, they don't call it a multiplier bonus. They call it an ICE bonus or an ICE, which stands for Index Crediting Enhancement Bonus, uh, but is essentially a multiplier of the after-floor, after-cap uh, index return in a given year. And we're going to assume that the participating loan rate is 6%, which is what Penn Mutual's current participating loan rate is. And then we're going to run this proxy. Uh, again, the proxy is not the Penn Mutual product, right? The proxy is a hypothetical synthetic asset that behaves very similar to the real world product. In this case, the real world product design that we're attempting to semi mimic is the Penn Mutual IUL product. Okay, and we're going to look at uh, historical re returns, uh, actually 121 different 40 year actual historical periods of S&P 500 performance. So again, this is the proxy design that we're using. If we take a look at the charges and credits page, I know it's almost kind of overwhelming here. <laughs> but this is uh, the charges and credits page that we show um, in our Landsmark Capital report. This shows the uh, hypothetical outcomes during the best 40 year period out of the 121 different periods that we model. Uh, and when I say best period, what that really means is the 40 year period that produced the best compounded annual growth rate out of those 121 different periods. We also look at the period that produced the worst compounded annual growth rate out of those 121 different 40 year periods. And this is the worst one we're looking at right here. Um, if I blow up kind of the key columns here, it's be easier for us to take a look at. Um, if we look right there on the left-hand side, uh, we basically import the standard policy charges right out of the carrier illustration. And then we look at the back-tested S&P return uh, in this particular year, 1987. Uh, in this particular 12-month segment, uh, the gross return was negative 15.51%. Uh, in that situation, assuming a 1% floor, uh, the return would have been 1%. And in the next year there, where the S&P produced a 28% return, uh, that would have maxed out the cap. So the return would have been 10%, or I should say the gross index return uh, would be 10%. So this after floor slash after cap return would then be multiplied by the multiplier bonus or the index credit enhancement bonus of 1.15 so that... Uh, pre-multiplier bonus of 10% would actually be an 11.50% index credit in that given year based on this particular crediting design. Uh, as we discussed earlier in this particular design, there is an asset-based charge that accompanies that 1.15x multiplier bonus in, in the amount of 75 basis points. So in the back-tested proxy, what we do is we take that 75 basis point charge, we multiply that by the gross accumulated value, and that calculates that asset-based charge there. So on this particular page, in this particular Landsmark Capital report, in the orange section there, we actually take a look at, on an annual basis, a year-to-year -year basis, what the gross total index credit would have been. Uh, we also take a look at what the charges in that year would have been, which would be the standard charges as well as the asset-based charges. And then we calculate what the simulated cash surrender value would have increased or decreased by based on the credits and the charges in each given year. We also run a ledger showing what the outcome of the participating loan proposition would look like. So in this particular design here, we are paying off the loan using a participating loan in the 14th year we are also taking those $1 million annual drawdowns. And then we are showing the interest due from the participating loan. And we are accruing that interest internally, which is the way that a participating loan will work in a real world IEL product. Uh, we're using 6% as the participating loan rate in this particular hypothetical model here. 
And we are also showing what the index credits would be in each given year based on that participating loan proposition. In other words, we are running a tab behind the scenes that shows the accrued debt on the participating loan proposition, but we are also calculating what the ongoing index credits would be by leaving that participating loan amount in the index account, receiving that annual index credit based on the historical S&P performance with the floor, cap, multiplier, and asset-based charge proposition. Now, this particular 40-year period that we're looking at here is the 40-year period that produced the worst compounded annual growth rate out of those 121 different 40-year periods that we analyzed. So the reason that we're highlighting this particular 40-year period is this is the 40-year period that it would make sense for a client to be concerned that perhaps there are too many years of negative arbitrage between the index credits and the participating loan debt accrual. But if we look down at the very bottom of the page there, over the 40-year run, uh, using the participating loan proposition, we've racked up $133 million of debt with, in a real-world product, with the carrier, right, for the participating loan. However, the index account has increased in an amount of $208 million by leaving those amounts in the index account, continuing to get that index credit every year which would have created cumulatively over this 40-year period a positive arbitrage of over $75 million. Now, this does not happen with every single product design out there. So the positive or negative arbitrage that's going to exist over time is going to be based on essentially the relationship between the charges and the credits. So in our proprietary software, one of the reports that our software generates is this graph here. And you've probably seen this graph before if you sat through some of my webinars. So if you've seen this before, uh, stay with me here because this is not going to be just a repeat of all these other backtesting webinars I've done before. We're going to actually take a look at how this design matches up with a clone of another real world products design. And it's going to be extremely shocking. Okay, so now the heavily dashed green line represents the values uh, in our proxy during the 40-year period that produced the best compound annual growth rate. The dotted green line is the worst 40-year period. The blue line is the as-illustrated cash value right out of the Penn Mutual illustration with an assumption of 6.35% uh, annual index credit. Uh, the black line there is the as-illustrated net death benefit. Again, assuming that 6.35% annual index credit. So when we look at this graph overlay here, this is part of why I feel so comfortable and confident using a Penn Mutual product, or I should say this particular Penn Mutual product with this particular client uh, in their particular very unique set of circumstances. Because if we look at the proxy back tested comparison, the worst 40 year period in this hypothetical synthetic asset that we created where the charges and the crediting methodology um, is the same as the real world Penn Mutual product, the 40 year uh, worst 40 year period ends up with a more positive outcome over 40 years uh, than the as illustrated cash value amount and illustrated death benefit amount in the actual Penn Mutual carrier illustration. Now that makes me feel really comfortable that the product design is built efficiently because even with all of that volatility and the poor sequence of returns, this particular charges and crediting methodology works better than a static 6.35% return ongoing. So if you saw the email invitation that I sent out regarding this particular webinar, I said I was upset. Why am I so upset? I mean, this Penn Mutual design, or I should say the clone of this Penn Mutual design in our proxy performed brilliantly well with the back-tested returns. Why am I so upset? Here's why I'm so stinking upset. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. On this particular case design, I was actually looking at a different product from a different carrier. And when I ran the same exact design with the other carrier versus the Penn Mutual, 
This is what the comparison looked like, okay? The green line represents the as illustrated death benefit net of loans in the Penn Mutual illustration. The black line represents the as illustrated death benefit with the other carrier's product. Now, if we just look at the illustrated net death benefits, there is no way I'm gonna sell Penn Mutual if, we, if all we're looking at is the screen right here, right? The black line represents the ongoing death benefit net of loans with the other carrier's product. And again, this is using the actual carrier's illustration. And then the green line there represents the death benefit net of loans using the Penn Mutual product uh, in the premium financing design. Now, again, if we just look at the comparison between the as illustrated net death benefits, there's no way I'm gonna sell the Penn Mutual product to the client when the black line looks so much better. The problem is that if we're just going off of the as illustrated depictions, we really don't understand if one product is gonna outproduce the other product in a real world scenario based on the floor and the caps and the charges during times of volatility. There's no way of actually knowing exactly what's gonna happen, but the proxy report gives us a decent indication of how things may turn out based on the relationship between the charges and the credits and the floors and the caps. So when we look at the proxy design, we're gonna look at the Penn Mutual charges and credits design versus the other carriers charges and credits design. And we're gonna start off looking at the 40 year period that produced the best compound annual growth rate. Here we have a substantially different outcome here. And again, these are the hypothetical account values in the proxy that are uh, kind of like, again, act as the proxy to the cash surrender value in a real world product. Here in the black, we have proxy design number one. Again, that was using the charges and credits methodology and the other carriers product design versus in the green, this is proxy number two that is designed based on the Penn Mutual's charges and credit methodology. So if we're looking at the proxy from a design standpoint, proxy number two drastically outperformed proxy number one. If we look at the collateral requirements between the two, drastically different. I mean, look in year six there, proxy number one's design would require over $4.1 million in collateral Versus proxy number two, again, in the green there, that's using the Penn Mutual product design. Uh, that one would only require $2.6 million in outside collateral. So huge difference there. If we look at the worst 40-year period out of the 121 different periods that we analyze, again, look at the difference there. Proxy number one versus proxy number two. And again, these are the net account value comparisons that are meant to somewhat simulate cash surrender value in a real world product. If we look at the outside collateral requirement comparison here, there's proxy number one in year nine at over $5 million, uh, and that's the high point. Whereas proxy number two, the high point outside collateral uh, required would be $3.2 million. Now, just because proxy number one in this particular scenario performed better than proxy number two does not necessarily mean that one carrier is better than the other carrier. It doesn't mean that one product is better than the other product universally but it does give us some indications relative to the specific client's age as well as health. Remember, this was a table five. Uh, it is indicative that the charges with one particular carrier's product for this particular client tended to be substantially higher than the other carrier's product. Now, the carrier's product design that we use for proxy number one, I will say I've used that carrier's product in a number of other designs with a number of other clients and it worked really, really well. Uh, it's just really interesting when we run the back-tested reports uh, to see how the charges and the credits relationship can work advantageously uh, or really detrimentally uh, in the back-tested report based on the client's age and health and all of the other factors that go into uh, designing an actual product. But here's where I got really angry. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Okay, if we look at the as illustrated carrier numbers compared to the back tested proxy with that proxy number one, the black line, this is where I got really nervous here. So again, in that particular design, the blue line there, that is the as illustrated 
carrier cash surrender value. The black line there is the as illustrated carrier death benefit net of loans. But look at those green lines there. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Look at those green lines there. When we use the charges and crediting methodology in the Penn Mutual product and then imported those values into our software, the back tested proxies performed as good, if not better, than the as illustrated carrier numbers over time. With this particular carrier's charges and crediting methodology, the back tested proxy performed substantially worse during a number of those years compared to the as illustrated carrier numbers on the blue line. In fact, if we look there in uh, year 31, even during the best 40 year period out of the 121 periods that we analyze, that hits a low point of almost zero. And that is right around life expectancy. Now, can you imagine if he sold a client a premium finance life insurance policy and the assumptions were all based on that blue line and the black line and several years into it with volatility that they ended up getting one of those green lines where the simulated cash value bottoms out almost to zero? You see, the point of this is you, you would have no way of knowing that that product design is not going to handle volatility well because when you ran the carrier illustration, everything looked great. I mean, look at that black line there, right? It hits a low point of just over $10 million right in the 14th year. And then the death benefit stays above that $10 million low point mark all the way through to the very end. In good conscience, I would say that, you know, all intentions being good, an agent that sold that product thinks they're selling a client a great proposition. When in reality, if you look at those green lines, I don't know about you, but that makes me extremely nervous. <laughs> if I sold a client that black line and then I ran the back tested report after the client already bought and I saw this, I would be freaking out. And again, you would have no way of knowing that what you sold the client would not hold up well over time with volatility unless you had this back testing report. I know I keep waving this flag and blowing this whistle, but Lionsmark Capital is the only premium financing intermediary in the entire life insurance industry that has the ability to model these back-tested reports via the proxy. This is the only way you're going to know if you're doing the right thing for the client. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Again, I know I'm biased in saying this, and this may seem, again, very overly biased towards you know, my firm, but how in the hell are you going to feel good about selling a premium finance policy unless you see a report like this? I mean, it seems to me extremely irresponsible to sell a premium finance life insurance policy without seeing this report. Now, again, if we look back at the Penn Mutual design versus the proxy that uses the same Penn Mutual charges and credits methodology. Again, the back tested report shows that the proxy over time severely outperforms the as illustrated numbers. All right, so this is why I'm so bad out of shape this morning. Right? This is why I was so bad out of shape this past week as I was doing this analysis for a real client because I was all set to move forward with Carrier X. Right, the black line until I looked at the back tester report page. I'm like, oh my God. Again, look at this thing. Like, I can't sell that in good conscience. I cannot recommend that in good conscience. Then I ran the Penn Mutual, which did not look as good as illustrated. But when we look at this back tester report here, I feel extremely confident and good about recommending this to the client because the back test report shows the simulated cash values outperforming the carrier illustration. Okay, so you're probably looking at this, asking yourself the question, who is carrier X and why in the hell would anyone sell carrier X? It's a good question. Um, it's a logical question to ask. The more I got into designing this case, as I was asking myself that question, I thought, okay, well, is it the product? Is it the carrier? Or is it the specific design of the specific product with a specific carrier with this specific client? If you're not an illustration guru and you're having someone else run your illustrations, then you're probably not aware of all the little levers you can pull in regards to the actual design in the carrier illustration. 
Uh, I'm not going to give away my secret sauce on this webinar today in terms of how we make those tweaks to maximize the efficiency of the cash value growth within the real world product. But I will say this, there are two tweaks we made within each product that changed the bat tested outcomes dramatically. Uh, what I'm going to show you on the next slide here is the as illustrated death benefits net of loans. Again, this is in the carrier illustration with both the Penn Mutual product as well as Carrier X. However, this time we made an adjustment to the design of Carrier X's real world product. When we made that adjustment, it, the disparity was even greater, right? So now you look at this and they say, there's no way I'm selling Penn Mutual. Look at Carrier X's net death benefit based on that one little tweak. Well, that doesn't tell you the whole story. The question is, how does this look in the back tested report using the proxy? So again, exact same Carrier X product, exact same premium financing loan model. The difference is that we tweaked a design feature in the product. And now we have something that looks a little bit more along the lines of what the Carrier illustration is showing. Uh, so again, the blue line in Carrier X uh, is the as illustrated cash surrender value. The black line is the as illustrated death benefit net of loans. And then the green lines show the back tested proxy values. Again, not as good as the proxy where we use the Penn Mutual charges and crediting methodology, but at least the green lines are a lot closer to the blue line. Now, if I'm going to take an objective look at both the back tested proxies using the Penn Mutual charges and crediting methodology versus Carrier X's. Again, this is Carrier X that we're looking at here. Uh, is it a bad product? It's not a bad product, right? If, if the, the green lines are a lot closer to the blue line, but they're still pretty substantially lower than the blue line throughout the large majority of this 40 year window here. Whereas the proxy where we use the Penn Mutual charges and credits methodology, uh, again, very different outcome. Uh, the proxy is severely outperforming the as illustrated numbers in the carrier illustration. This makes me feel a lot more comfortable and it lets me know that that particular charges and crediting methodology can withstand that volatility uh, with the market going up and down. So if I go back to the graph here that shows the original design of the Penn Mutual death benefit net of loans versus carrier X's products, death benefit net of loans, just on the surface, if we're just looking at carrier illustrated numbers in the carrier illustration, carrier X looks a lot better than Penn Mutual, but carrier X's back testing looks awful. Again, could you sell carrier X's product in good conscience if you made some of those tweaks after seeing the back testing report? Yes, you could absolutely do that. You could do that. But what makes me nervous is that when all we're looking at is carrier illustrated numbers, which is what we're looking at on the screen right now, to me, this is extremely misleading. It leads you to believe as the advisor that that carrier illustration with those assumptions is going to hold up well over time with volatility. And as we saw over time, it does not. So again, it's not that carrier X is a bad carrier. It's not that their product is bad. What was bad, in my humble opinion, is that the as illustrated net death benefit leads you to believe that you could have that particular product design, meaning the blends and all of those things that go into the uh, product design that is custom designed by the person that's illustrating. It leads you to believe that those particular design parameters are going to keep the client in a safe space. And that may not be true. Again, the only way you would know that is if you had the back testing software to actually run these reports and actually see. Again, Landsmark Capital is the only premium financing intermediary that has the ability to show you these types of reports. And in fact, I know I keep saying that. I sound like a broken record saying that we're the only one. We're the only. Well, we are the only one. Not only are we the only premium financing intermediary that has this software, we're the only firm, financed or non-financed, that has the ability to show these back tested returns. I actually have advisors coming to me now who we've done several premium financing cases together and they're asking me, hey, can we work together on non-finance policies so we can use your back testing report? The answer is yes. Now, whether or not you think it's worth it giving up a split in order to get access 
you know, to these tools. I mean, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but the short answer is yes, we do currently work with advisors on non-financed policies when the advisor wants to be able to show the client the back-tested comparisons. So every client is different. Every particular set of parameters are different. Age, health rating, uh, financing platform. We have four different financing platforms for four di very different specific client demographics. Uh, each client has a different net worth, liquidity, risk tolerance, et cetera, et cetera, right? All of those factors come into play when we're custom designing a premium financing offering for your client. One size does not fit all when it comes to premium financing. And that's what I see out there in the market. So many times clients are being shoved into one particular premium financing design that is not appropriately designed for that particular client. So again, we have four different designs, which is one thing that makes this extremely unique. We have the back testing software. Second thing that makes this extremely unique. Third thing that makes this extremely unique is we record a custom 30 to 40 minute video with every proposal. We upload that video to the cloud and it's actually my voiceover walking the client through their specific numbers. We upload that video to the cloud. We circulate the link. And so you're giving it to your client. Your client can give it to their spouse. They can give it to their CPA or their estate planning attorney or their idiot brother-in-law or whoever it is that wants to uh, get a better understanding of what they're thinking about doing. Um, this way we have quality control, right? It's my voice uh, transparently talking about all the factors that should be talked about when it comes to premium financing. Uh, that video goes into the client file in our CRM. And so if the client ever comes back and tries to say, oh, this wasn't uh, discussed, this was not articulated clearly, well, we've got a video that would prove otherwise. So I recently did a two-day premium financing boot camp in my office in Irvine, the, the, you know, the office that I'm still paying for that I don't use anymore. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had 38 agents attend, 11 of them flew in from out of state. And I went through all the different premium financing designs. We went, did a deep dive into the details of premium financing. I also had a pretty large section talking about how to market premium financing, how to bring up the concepts to your clients. I gave them email templates that they can copy, paste, and send. And we have four-minute marketing videos uh, custom produced uh, that you can send to your uh, potential clients and your clients. But one of the big things I talked about with these agents is that you have to have a USP, right? Which is a unique selling proposition. A unique selling proposition answers the question, why should someone do business with you, only you and nobody else? And so as an example, I use my USP is a basically a three pronged USP. Again, unique proposition number one, four different unique lending platforms specifically designed for four different client demographics. Second USP, proprietary backtesting software that you cannot get anywhere else. And the third USP is our custom 30 to 40 minute videos where it's me going through the client's specific design. Again, we upload it to the cloud and then we can circulate that link to all interested parties. All right, so that's it. Um, glad you could be on the webinar with us today. Hopefully this information was extremely valuable to you and really got you to see kind of behind the scenes of how these products can perform um, you know, in a hypothetical scenario, run through our actual historical back testing software that shows actual historical S&P performance. Um, again, the carrier illustrations uh, are necessary, obviously, um, but they just really don't educate the client as to how the moving parts of these products work, um, specifically with premium financing and also non-finance as well, right? When you're looking at charges and floors and caps and multiplier bonuses and asset-based charges and all these different um, ingredients that go into making the perfect cocktail uh, of an IEL product, um, unless you're able to run it through my bad testing software, you really have to ask yourself the question, how do you even know as an advisor if you're selling the right product to the right client? How do you even know if what you're proposing is good for the client unless you're able to run it through that uh, back-tested periods uh, through a proxy model where you can actually see how the charges and credits work and what potential final outcomes could be based on volatility and poor sequence of returns. So again, I'm Darren Subiyama, CEO and founder of Lionsmark Capital. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this webinar and enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you guys soon.